because I didn't know how well it would work on other people. And everyone said, please do it. I've been to a lot of doctors. Nothing worked. I don't want surgery. Or I've had surgery and it failed. Go for it. So I had very willing patients. Before I knew it, just about all I was doing was prolotherapy. So this is a study done by Dean Reeves. He is a physiatrist, not a psychiatrist, but a physiatrist, which is someone who's board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation. That's where I did my training at UCLA to get that board certification. Prior to that time, in my studies and in my training, I always loved orthopedic surgery, so I did as much as that I could. But then, after a failed surgery on myself, I jumped ship. I didn't want to do surgery anymore. I didn't want to hurt people. So this guy's excellent. He does a lot of research. You can look him up on Google. He does studies constantly. This one is about um, finger pain, okay? X-ray criteria met for finger arthritis. That means that all the people he took in the study had finger arthritis that was documented by X-ray. Treatments. Three injections of half a cc of 10% dextrose on either side of the joint versus water. So we had some patients, they're called the control, that didn't get prolotherapy, but they got injected with water. They didn't know. The doctors injecting didn't know. And the patients didn't know which group was getting prolotherapy, which group was getting water. Now, I read this study, and I called him up immediately because it was 10% dextrose. That's non-inflammatory. That's the kind of stuff we put in your veins when you go in the hospital. It doesn't sclerose the veins. And I said, Dean, this is crazy. Why did you use a 10% non-inflammatory solution when you're trying to prove that prolotherapy works? And he said, I wanted to prove that prolotherapy does not have to be an inflammatory process. I still didn't understand. And then when I read the study again, and I talked to him more, I realized that what happens is when you inject a noxious stimulation into an area, it may not be inflammatory, that there's growth factors that appear there. There's all kinds of things that stimulate growth that don't have to do with inflammation. So prolotherapy can be done in such a way where it is non-inflammatory. I have a tendency to use more of a pro-inflammatory technique. But some people will come in with, let's say, rheumatoid arthritis, a very inflammatory state where the whole body is inflamed. What I do with them is I use nutrition and supplements to quell the fire in their system. And then I'll start with a very dilute dextro solution because I don't want to make what they have worse. So as results, less than one teaspoonful of simple 10% dextrose solution over six months in each joint resulted in a 42% improvement in pain and an eight degree improvement in flexibility. That's pretty radical. Injury to the cervical spine is a cause of headache. Very common when people have migraine headaches. Anyone here get migraines? Okay. Not too many, that's good. Most migraines that I see are not migraines. They may have a migraine element to them, but one of the stimulus may be certain trigger points in the back of the head, the occiput back here, or the neck, or the trap muscles, or the supraspinatus muscles, the rhomboid muscles. If we can touch the back and find spots that radiate up, I had a series of headaches one summer about five years ago. Never had headaches but it was from the levator scapula insertion on my scapula. And it would start about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. If I didn't take a Tylenol, which I didn't do for a long time because I was waiting to see what's going on, and I didn't want to take that. So I would watch that as the afternoon went on. It would start to climb up and then go into one side of my head, and I'd be in bed for the rest of the night. Couldn't function. So I was torn what to do. So many people I've had come in and they go, I have these terrible migraine headaches. We'll find a spot like that. We'll do prolotherapy on it. And voila, headaches go away. So I'm going to show you some slides of referral patterns to show you how that works. So the end point here is a surprising number of intractable chronic headaches respond to a complete regimen of treatment to alleviate muscle spasm, to relax, break up scar tissue and adhesions. Adhesions are just scar tissue. Well, you can, use pro, you can actually use prolotherapy to break up scar tissue. We can add, sometimes I'll add DMSO, horse liniment, 
Do you know what that is? Dimethyl sulfoxide. You got it. Dimethyl sulfoxide. It's a very volatile liquid, and it carries whatever it has with it. Like we put a, a steroid into a trigger finger. Any trigger fingers in the audience? Okay, we got a couple trigger fingers. They're miserable, right? Have you ever had a steroid injection to fix them? Did it work for a long time? Short period of time. When we add DMSO to the steroid, because you don't want to do prolotherapy on something that's already growing too much, and that's all it is. It's just a constriction of the tendon. So what we do is we'll use a steroid for that. We'll mix DMSO. The DMSO will then actually go through that dense fibrous material. So if someone has a surgery, we'll often use prolotherapy with DMSO to get through the scarring that takes place after surgery. Milne Angli, he's a very elderly gentleman in Mexico. I think he's from Australia. He's not licensed here, but he um, has done prolotherapy for many years. He's one of the grandfathers of prolotherapy. And um, he's done many, many studies with prolotherapy, found it to be very amazing. Um, this doesn't actually go through what the study is here. But he had the many members of the Olympic ski team fly to Mexico from Europe. And they got prolotherapy. They healed up very well. And guess what the Olympic doctors did? They wanted to kick them out. They said that prolotherapy was doping, like taking drugs. Why? Because you're not supposed to heal that fast. So they're using something that's illegal. Leo did a study of um, using sclerosing solution in rabbit medial collateral ligaments and its junction strength. So the medial collateral ligament is right down here, keeps the knee stable from coming sideways. MCL, MCL that's right. So he did a double-blind study, conducted to assess the influence of sclerosing solution on the rabbits, and it was shown <clears throat> 50, what is this, 5% sodium moruate, which is the cod liver oil extract, into the MCL and its bony attachments, significantly increased its bone ligament bone junction strength that was about, about two to 400% stronger, meaning that the ability to break that ligament or that tendon uh, was much decreased. And the actual mass and thickness compared to saline injected, they used the saline for the controls, was about 50% thicker. And I'll show you pictures of that also. This is the same study, shows the mass increase with saline, it was 89.7 um, milligrams, and the sodium moriate group is 132. So they're both injected, but you see that one got much, much bigger. Thickness, much, much bigger. Failure energy, that means trying to pull it apart. 34.1 newtons per centimeter versus 26.4. This is an actual picture showing what that study was about. On the left here, we have a pre- prolotherapy tendon. What do you see on the right side? This is the same tendon. What's the difference? It's bigger, it's bigger and thicker, and, and obviously, from what they say, is a lot stronger. I don't want to go on with any more of these studies, but um, my point really in just showing these is that if you want to do research on this, if you want to just Google, like you can start with Dean Reeves, you'll find a lot of studies that are going on now. He did one about the knee where there's ACL lig ligament laxity. The ACL holds the tibia from sliding off the femur. So there's a test we do when someone has a knee injury. We pull the tibia forward, see if it slides forward. If it does and there's no end point, then we think there's an ACL rupture, meaning it's cut. These were people that had laxity. Not this one. I'm pointing there. Uh, but, but the study by Reeves. And it showed that after a series of prolotherapy, that knee tightened back up and the pain went away. Very, very successful study also. Oh, here it is. This is his double-blind placebo-controlled study of dextrose prolotherapy for knee osteoarthritis and ACL laxity. Three bi-monthly injections, nine cc's of 10% dextrose. There he goes again, non-inflammatory dose. And 0.75% lidocaine in water versus identical solution without dextrose. Osteoarthritis was checked with 111 patients, ACL laxity in 25 patients. Following three bi-monthly 10% dextrose injections, 